What's up, all my folks out in YouTube land? Daryl, also known as Finisher. Hey, sometimes when starting a business, you have to figure out, is there something, should I have a, a bunch of money stashed away first? I mean, you know, or instead of waiting until then, should I just, you know, the Les Brown approach where, you know, he's like, hey, sometimes you gotta jump out, jump out the plane and learn how to fly on the way down. Both approaches work, you know, but I know I suggest that you have a stash. And I was watching a video from um, my guy Marcus, Marcus the Money Man, uh, you know, the appliance boss. <laughs> I love it, man. He did his uh, uh, a video about him, you know, how he started his business. And uh, one, the one thing I noted that was totally different from what I did is that he actually had an entire year's worth of his salary saved up. Or I think, you know, somewhere in that, in that ballpark where you know somebody like me started just with nothing so he got me thinking you know I, i'm 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 more along the lines of the way he did it <laughs> you know what i mean you might be different i think he did it the better way because in a much shorter time he was able to build faster because of his preparation that's not saying i didn't have a plan at all but you can only do so much on your plan if you have no money right so let's get into it why i think you should have a stash set aside before you start your business. The first reason you should have a stash, in my opinion, is mistakes, man. If you think you're about to start this thing, you're never gonna make a mistake. You are, <laughs> you're tripping, but I mean, you got irrational confidence, bro. Like, I'm not sure where you're getting all this confidence where you think that you're just not gonna make any mistakes. So it might not even be your fault. I knew a guy who, who had a uh, landscaping company and um, he had a bunch of he had a he had a bunch of tools and everything. He tied he hired people, and you know they stole all the stuff. And he didn't have the money. He had he didn't have the money to go out and buy equipment again. You know what I mean? Like it's just stuff like that. So it might the mistakes might not always be your fault, but they're gonna be. You're also gonna make stuff that's your fault, like you know taking the job underbidding. You think you're gonna bid every job perfectly in the beginning? No, you're gonna underbid. And I am anti going back to the customer asking for more money because I messed up, right? If I open up a wall and we find something spectacular, you know, a spectacular disaster in there, it is what it is, you know what I mean? But they know ahead of time that this unknown, man, I ain't got x ray vision. I don't know what's, what's gonna happen once I open up this wall, right? But certain things that I, you just gotta know in advance, right? I, for example, the mistake I made was sometimes doing estimates, not doing estimates as thoroughly as I could. And I had to learn this the hard way, man. Like you got, I detail estimates now. I'm like, it's like a police report. Man, I got, got one time where I was like, okay, um, so we had discussed painting the room, whatever. So I was like, okay, well, yeah, I'll go ahead and paint the room. And that's all I put on the estimate. I had a price for it. Man, I show up, they got the ceiling paint right next to, you know, whatever. And I was like, I didn't say paint this. I wouldn't plan on painting the ceiling. I took it on the chin, you know why? Because in the estimate that they agreed to, I said I was gonna paint the room. I mean, they could have took it and had me pay, had a trim too, I guess if they wanted. So I figured they wasn't trying to pull a fast one on me. Maybe they just assumed. Since he said, oh, he said paint room. Okay, well, I guess he's gonna paint the ceiling too. So I ate that one, you know, I took that on the chin. Um, another example, um, this is a physical one. I'm gonna show you this one. This is a table full of mistakes. This right here, y'all know these blinds, right? These are the ones that you can get cut at Lowe's. They're pretty expensive, you know, because they come with you, they can get cut in the box and you just take them at Lowe's and give them your measurements. They just cut them right for you. Well, I bought all these, all these blinds, seven sets, almost $600 worth of blinds. And one thing I didn't because I was so gung-ho and eager, just like in my first year. You see, I, you, can't, you probably can't see the dust. These got dust all over them because I refused to throw these things away. I mean, it's $600. Eventually, 
I promise you, I'm gonna get a customer that has the exact same model of house and I'm gonna sell these to them. All right, it's been like four years, but I'm determined. Anyway, right on these box, right here, it says room darkening. You probably can't see it, but it says room darkening. I, was, I wasn't paying attention. I even checked the messages. It's after I bought them, had them cut. I'm ready to get them installed. And then I don't know what made me check again. Something told me, man, I don't know. And then I just looked at her message and it said, her said light filtering, that she wanted the light filtering. And I was devastated at the time. It was taking a big chunk of everything I had. Like the, so I had to go back and get new blinds and 600 bucks because I just wasn't thinking. Just that quick, $600 out the window. So, and there's, that's not it, there's other mistakes. So I promise you, if you think that you're never gonna make a mistake or nothing's, nothing's ever gonna happen, man, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I was very fortunate that I got away with some of the mistakes that I made without going into the hole. You know, stuff where, uh, <laughs> you know, I draw a drill. I learned now, another tip that you should always practice. You working on somebody's uh, house and you got they got hardwoods and stuff, just lay your drill down. Lay your drill down. Don't let it, don't set it up because what happens, it's gonna fall. You're gonna knock it over, and when you do, you're gonna knock over the the point of your drill bit. It's gonna hit that floor every time. I promise you. I had times where you know it fell, my drill bit fell and split a piece of wood, and they noticed it immediately. Luckily, I do hardwoods, and they had an extra piece, and I was able to fix it myself instead of paying hundreds of dollars for somebody else to do it. But I'm just saying, you're gonna make mistakes. You're gonna make mistakes. So it's better to have a stash, man, so it doesn't, you don't get, it don't, you don't end up as that 80% that, you know, doesn't make it five years, all right? So. The next thing you wanna do is be able to reinvest into your business, all right? So if you have a stash up front, then there's things you're gonna be able to get faster. For instance, like, you know, a trailer or something like that. Um, those, I mean, that's that's a major thing, but man, I'll tell you what, it would have saved me so much headache if I would have had a trailer early on, just, just straight from the start. Or I was able to have a certain, uh, certain kind of van or something like that really early versus me just using a pickup. Because, ah, uh, having to, you know, wrap pieces of drywall out in Lowe's parking lot was not fun. On top of that, like, uh, you know, one thing you benefit from as a handyman is the versatility, being able to do so many different jobs, right? So unlike a plumber who just has plumbing tools or, you know, electrician just has electrical tools and, you know, whatever industry it is, you're kind of looked at that you need tools from, to make your life easier. You don't have to have them all, but to make your life easier, you need tools from in a whole bunch of different genres, right? You don't need every tool, but you're gonna need some. Look, exhibit A. You do a lot of flooring, laminate, bam. You don't need one of these, right? But if you can get one early and just cut your floors, boom, boom, you know, get your vinyl cutter or a laminate, it's great to have, right? So it's not like you have to have it, but if you can, how many floors could you do? How much faster and more proficient, efficient can you be with one of those? Or, hold on, I got another one. Boom. That power auger, see that? This thing right here, man, like, if you dig fence posts, I mean, this is your best friend right here, right? And I'm not saying you have to have all this stuff in the beginning. It's just, if you were starting out and you knew that what you were gonna be doing most is gonna be fences and things of that nature, you have the money to just start out and have that, you know, or be, and be able to invest the money in the things that you need versus doing like I did and having to, it, took a long time for me to buy all the things that I need because don't fool yourself. It's not like you can just, I just take it out the profits all the job because bruh, you still gotta pay your bills. You still gotta taxes. You still got all the other things you have to do with your money. So you're not gonna just be able to just, oh, I did this job. You know, unless you've got a job 
full, work full time, you just do this part time and build it up like that, then you can do that. But otherwise, if you have a stash, you'll be able to move a little faster on, on uh, getting those things that you need to make your business more efficient. All right, man, the next thing is seasons. You know, uh, you wanna have a stash so that when the seasons change, sometimes, you know, even though you're not working outside or something like that, a lot of times in the winter time, the, the phones might start slowing down. And a lot of uh, people in this profession don't receive emergency calls. You know, it's not like you're a plumber or electrician or something like that where some, or something's flooded and then they call you. Some people do, you know, you usually don't get emergency calls. A lot of times, you know, you might have seasons. Some people got you know, just keep it year round, but especially when you're first starting, you're gonna have lean times. And when you do, if you got a little stash, you got a little something put, put behind, it's, it's no burden, you know? I remember the first year, my first year is like in November. Dude, it was like, I didn't realize I, like, this is when I first realized that nobody's gonna be calling me for emergency. I didn't have, I got so busy that I wasn't taking, uh, scheduling the calls out. I wasn't even taking the calls at this point. I was just like, man, I ain't got time to get to these phones. Man, I got around Thanksgiving. First thing happened, I had a lady cancel a window job, right? I had to refund her like $1,000. Second thing that happened was the phones went dead. Man, everything went dead. Even the apps, at the time I was using uh, the paid services and I mean everything went silent uh, right around Thanksgiving like the, probably like the week before Thanksgiving it was bad I mean I had a whole month where I think I made after everything it was like 1500 and let me tell you something my bills are a little more than that remember I'm the dude with the whole family out here you know what I mean like it ain't it, it ain't just me so we got you know I have a substantial amount of bills you know I pay so have a stash, man, then those won't be concerns. You can still make moves even when times are tough or when, you know, the phone slows down. Last but not least, y'all, think about it. It's kind of like, you know, when people make a lot of money. For some reason, the more money you make, the less life costs. Come on, man. Y'all know what I'm talking about. But it's not just on a level of like, you know, rich people or something like that, where you like see somebody in Hollywood and you're thinking like, um, yeah, maybe for them it's like that. No, no, it's like that for everybody. It might be more so that you make so much money, then all of a sudden people start sending you clothes and start sending you this and that and letting you in places for free. Well, yes, that's the thing. But for you, you know, you starting out a business like this, it does the same thing. Think about it. Something like uh, something as small as snap toggles, man. I had a job where, dude, I put up so many shelves and I had, I always used the snap toggles. Um, and they can be pretty pricey. You know, a pack of 10 is like 14, $15. Well, I went in the store and man, they had a hundred box now. First time I saw it, cause I, I, I've had a stash for a long time of, uh, of those, but a hundred box for like 80. You just do the math. You keep buying the $15 packs. It, to, to get 100, it you cost you $140. You know, when um so if early in the game, you could just start getting the stuff in bulk and it, it like I said, that's month that's more money that you get to have in your pocket because you're, you know, a lot a lot of your prices going to, you know, just going to stay the same. So that's another way that you can add more revenue, right? You know, and that goes for anything. I mean, think about it. The, you know, when I finally was able to start buying caulk by the case instead of by the, by, you know, one at a time, and all of those things, they just add up, man. You know, uh, you could pay your your car, your insurance for the whole year, you get a discount associated with that instead of having to pay it by the month. There's discounts for everything. My CRM, I use Marquette, right? I use, I use Marquette, love it. You pay by the year, discount. Almost anything, you know, you get you get more money in your pocket if you just if you have a stash. So I'm not saying you can get everything, but it's good. Life just costs less when you have more money, and we could pay, especially if you have cash. You can pay stuff in cash. I know there's just people who love credit and all that, but I don't know, man. I don't. I'm not a big fan of just uh, using credit, especially right from the start. Because a lot of the business guys, I had local guys that I've talked to that have been in business for years, 
that when you know 2008 hit stuff like that that all those other, all those guys that had all the credit for everything they went under because they couldn't pay for all the different things they had credit on and the, a lot of the guys that survived were the people who just who owned everything they had so that's the philosophy i've been living by man that when i go out i buy a tool i don't put it on a credit card man I, it's straight cash homie you know randy moss so that's just me i'm not saying what you got to do you like the Hodge twins used to say, do whatever you want to do, all right? Daryl, also known as the finisher. Hey man, Handyman 2.0, y'all comment, subscribe. If you, you might have a, another uh, reason why. Or you might even think you don't need to have a stash. Like I said, you don't have to, but you might have a, a disagree with it. Let me know in the comments, man, all right? So y'all stay safe and be blessed.